Welcome to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. And today uh, we've got Mark Cameron on the show as my co-host, who we will talk to first. And following that, we'll have a chat to Blake Signal, who's the newly appointed uh, GM of Bowls Wellington. So, Mark, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Yeah, I'm very good, thank off, you. Oh, look, I'm, I'm blessed to be co-hosting today. Uh, I didn't think Aaron would give up the role, so um, so really pleased. Oh, yeah. Thanks thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. What does it mean being a co-host? Oh, it's a question only you could answer, Mark. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, have, I haven't got one prepared. Uh, so, yeah, I thought we'd get you on the show. It's a, a Am I like the first guest as well? You're the first guest, yeah, and one of two because yeah. it's a sort of... So does that really make condensed. me a co-host? Um, maybe you're more than a co-host. All right, we'll I'd, go I that. don't want to get into semantics about it, but I thought I'd like to pick your brain because you've just recently returned from the other side of the world. Uh, so obviously we'll talk a bit about that at some stage, um, that little com games thing. Uh, so yeah, just pick your brain on some topics. So I thought the I don't know the first thing. Do you want to have a chat about the the upcoming North First South? Yep. Yeah, I do. So um, big weekend for bowls in uh, Dunedin, uh, September eight, nine, and ten. Yes. I'll go with those dates, maybe 1911. It might uh, be 1911. 1911, yeah. um, and we're, whereby um, we have our awards evening, and as I understand it, there's around about 140 people coming along to our awards evening uh, on the Friday night. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Saturday and Sunday, we have North versus South, uh, an, an inaugural competition, uh, certainly in this format anyway. Uh, and that's really exciting. The teams have been named. I, I understand that who's playing who's going to going to be presented in the next few days as well, which yes. would be great. Um, they're all playing singles, triples, pairs, and fours. It's a two set format with a tiebreaker, a one end tie tiebreaker. If it's obviously drawn up one set all, um, uh, brought to you on YouTube TV. So go to Bowls NZ YouTube, and um, you'll be able to catch all the action free of charge uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about YouTube later on but I think that's really exciting uh, just to round it off not that most will be that interested in it but um, <laughs> Saturday morning we have an AGM uh, the Bowls New Zealand AGM is Saturday morning uh, I've got a board meeting so my board are down there on the on the Friday uh, we also have got all our judicial commissioners uh, judicial panel down there as well so we're really treating it as a as a um, I don't know, recognition, but also a bit of a working weekend mm. as well uh, in terms of um, in terms of bowls and the bowls community. So it should be special. Um, the highlight, and undoubtedly, will be the North versus South in the awards evening. Um, you know, and we look forward to this North South being a a an event that carries on and delivers for a number of years to come. And obviously, successful for, for the North Island, Mark. Hey, the North Island has to win that one. I'm allowed to say that. I'm not sure if you are. But the North Island, yeah, I think they're my pick for success. You mentioned the um, awards evening. It's the first one we've had for a couple of years. Was the, uh, What was the motivation behind sort of popping it back into the into the calendar, having a physical one? Uh, well, we always want to do it, um, but COVID obviously um, played a, played its part over the last two years. Uh, I'm not sure it's something we'd do annually. I think it's more a case of, you know, if there are significant things we want to recognise, then we'd look to do it. Um, it's quite a costly exercise, so it's, it's sometimes those things are hard to justify. But this year we've got three Hall of Fame uh, recipients, mm -hmm. so it'd be nice to present them to the to those people uh, and or, or and or their families. Uh, in the case of a couple, um, so that's really nice. We've got some good award winners that we want to present to. Um, just some nice stories coming out of, uh, and that we can you know we can um, celebrate. Mm. Uh, in terms of our community, so um, yeah, really, really keen to see that come back. Absolutely, it'll be um, it'll be good. So, I suppose next um, <clears throat> before we get into you know the YouTube TV and all that other sort of stuff, you have been on the other side of the world uh, at one of the slightly bigger sporting whatever you call it, things, the Com Games? The Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. What um, have you got to tell us about that, Mark? Oh, look, um, uh, we'll talk about results in a second, but um, uh, uh, I was reminded the other day, it's, um, someone said to me, oh, that's great, you went to Birmingham to watch the bowls. I said, yeah, I did, but it took 25 hours to fly there, <laughs> 25 hours to come home just to watch bowls. Uh, um, and saying that, great seats and you know it was it was such a um, Birmingham and, and in this case Leamington on Spa um, they were terrific mm. you know the greens were good the crowds were brilliant um, the way they presented the games and everything I think was fantastic so um, hats off to um, to the Com Games Federation and New Zealand Olympic Committee in terms of their support of our athletes I think that's that was fantastic 
Um, and in terms of results, uh, stating the obvious almost, but uh, the ladies did, did very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in some respects their only fall, fall um, was potentially that, you know, they had probably had a chance to win one of those um, semi-final games and, and get to a gold medal game, but but um, that's not bad from a from a from what I'll say is a newish team. Uh, I know they've they've got a little bit of international international experience, um, aside from Val, of course, who has got a lot of international experience. Fifth <laughs> Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Um, uh, the men will be disappointed, uh, and the para will will definitely be disappointed in their performances. Um, uh, and oh, it, it's not the this isn't the time and place to offer offer excuses or reasons. Um, you know we've got to got to have those conversations in house first and then also have those conversations with our funding partners mm-hmm. i.e. Um, high performance sport new zealand but but um you know we were disappointed in the the men and the in the para uh, and um uh and and work work will be done will need to be done uh, in time for the 23 world champs um next year uh in saying that we had a target with high performance sport new zealand of three medals at the com games uh and we delivered three medals um, so that's positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, three medals was our highest uh, medal count since 2002, with the exception of I think one other year in 14 or 12 or something like that. We also got three medals. Yeah. So um, it, yeah, in context, it was quite a good performance from mm-hmm. the New Zealand team, particularly at a Commonwealth Games, which for whatever reason, going right back to the 30s, we've never it's just never gone brilliantly. <laughs> which is which is funny, isn't it? Because in theory, it's less nations attending, mm. um, so that therefore must 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 increase the odds than over a world champs. You'd where think you, so. Where, yeah. you, where you have more, I, I think it's probably the conditions. Though we tend to have a lot of world champs. In my my time, in my view, a lot of world champs in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. Um, whereas the Commonwealth Games ends up in India's and Canada's and the UK's and you know and, and conditions that are foreign to us. Um, so. So yeah, no. I mean, we 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 um, we prepared. Uh, we were missing international competition though, mm. um, and when you look at the results of the Englands, the Scotlands, the Wales um, at the Com Games and Bowls, you know they performed very well. And um, you know one benefit that they've had is that they've been out there playing international matches prior to the Com Games. When you know the only internationals we've had for the last two years has been was a Trans Tasman in June of this year against Australia. So, um, you know, but in saying that, there were countries that that performed um, that surprised. Uh, India was a was an amazing story. Oh, how good for the sport as well. Oh, women's four gold and men's four was it? I think they got two men's golds. Four, in no, the f- men's four was tri- uh, silver, silver. They just yeah. tipped out in the in the men's four. But um, I talked to the guy. <laughs> I was talking to the um, um, the fellow afterwards, um, uh, uh, organising the Indian team and. Their preparation was um, in Delhi was playing on two artificial greens with basically old bowls. Uh, they turn up to Birmingham. Uh, they turn up early though, um, and then they're faced with these new greens, grass <laughs> greens, running at eleven seconds uh, and new bowls. And lo and behold, the you know a gold and a silver and perform incredibly well. Yeah, unbelievable. Yep. Really. Hey, hey, I was talking to him after, after the. I think it was the women's um, gold, and um, his phone was just running hot. And he said, "Look at this!" You know, it's like um, he had just had MS Dhoni, um, uh, what's the other big, the couple of the other big names in cricket who had been tweeting uh, and congratulating the Indian <laughs> women's team on their their gold medal. And and when the MS Dhonis and the uh, Kohlis and that sort of stuff tweet, they're tweeting to millions, tens of millions of people when they're going, "Well done, the Indian women's bowls team." Um, in Delhi, they had to on the front page. They've got a article on um, uh, on what bowls is yeah. after they won the gold because yeah. no one would have understood. But that's really exciting for our sport um, when you consider the Indias, the Malaysias. I think Botswana were in a quarter final. We might have played them in the they women's. They were, yeah, yeah. Botswana. Who knew they played bowls in Botswana? I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, I mean, I just think it's fantastic for our sport mm. if we if we want to be credible internationally, um, and if we want our sport to grow. And I think we've got Will Bowls on this um, topic list. But um, if if Will Bowls is to grow, it needs to grab one of those big three markets: Europe, Asia, or Americas. Uh, realistically, it's not going to grab Europe. 
you know, football centric, mm. uh, traditional sports. Uh, America is the Americas, and when you consider the United States, you know, even a lot of sports, rugby included, cricket, have been trying to get into the American market with millions of dollars and have failed. But there's actually an opportunity for bowls in this Asian market. And if if the Indias, the Chinas, the Hong Kongs, the Malaysias, the Singapores, um, if they can be encouraged, supported, um, there's a there's a there's a pathway down down there internationally for our sport, which is really exciting. Yeah, it's exciting going forward. Um, so <clears throat> at this Com Games that you attended, did you get much chance to like talk to other NSO you know, people in sort of similar positions? Yeah, very much so. So I um, I didn't get a chance to see any other sports. I watch bowls every every day. Good on you, Mark. <laughs> yep, thank you. I was committed committed to the team, as I should be. Um, uh, but I uh, spent a lot of time with, um, so all the main country's CEOs were there. Uh, so I spent a lot of time there. World Bowls, they've now got a new CEO. So Neil Dalrymple, who's been the Bowls Australia CEO, uh, is now coming on board as World Bowls CEO. And that's very exciting for our sport because, you know, if there's one country that has actually um, stepped ahead in terms of their Bowls um, support and coverage, it's it's Bowls Australia. So Neil coming in, I think, will be really exciting. Mm. Um, so, you know, a bit of time in that space as well, which was really good. Um, World Bowls had a conference at the end of the Commonwealth Games. So um, I had the pleasure of presenting our Bowls 3-5 to these countries. Brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was really good. Um, uh, and, and really reminding... Um, that's not fair, it shouldn't be our role to tell other people what to do, but suggesting that in our case anyway, um, that that social bowls market uh, is, a, is a growth opportunity for our sport. So not everyone in today's world you know, can play bowls on a Saturday and Sunday, but they can play on a Monday night or Tuesday night or whatever it might be. So, um, uh, you know, took, had, had a little bit of pleasure in, in terms of actually presenting the the three five initiative uh, yeah. internationally. That's what well. I was going to ask. Like, did you get a sense of sort of where Bowls New Zealand sits in relation to our you know what our thinking is like in comparison to the other? How many countries were there? Yeah, look, I um, uh, maybe I'm sharing too much, but but I'll do it anyway. Um, I came away with a distinct feeling that um, New Zealand we're we're doing well uh, in terms of bowls, and 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 this may sound a bit. But um, but harsh on others. But I don't think that bowls, bowls New Zealand and our bowls community should be benchmarking against other bowls nations. Now, mm. I think we're already we're already ahead, if not equal to other nations. Yeah. What we need to do is benchmark against other sports. So when other sports are doing really well, how can we actually step up to actually um, uh, equal or rival those other sports and how they deliver into communities and, and deliver on TV and the such. So um, it certainly came away with that impression that actually our community's going all right. Our numbers are tracking in the right direction. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of countries that are really struggling. Um, and they're probably struggling because they're still moving out of that traditional full-playing Saturday-Sunday only bowling club. Yeah. Um, uh, and they, they, it's difficult to adapt and you can imagine the home countries the Englands, um, the Scotlands and that they, they probably are struggling a little bit more in terms of going Just through the this perception, change. I suppose isn't it yeah that's interesting um, so before we move on from Com Games have you got any little anecdotes any, did anything funny happen Mark that you want oh, to I've share got a couple. on the, yes, on the yeah, podcast I before, yeah, before I do. we move Am on? Am I allowed to? I can, I can do I'm it. sure you can. Um, uh, I thought the best story was on my second day when um, when I was talking to somebody. I don't remember who it was. Probably better that I don't embarrass them. <laughs> um, and they were looking at two of our players standing side by side. And um, on the back of the New Zealand shirts, it's got New Zealand and then it's got Aotearoa yeah. underneath. Uh, and that person said, oh, are those two people related? <laughs> Uh, and they genuinely th- thought that their surname was Aotearoa, yeah. um, which was quite cute. Uh, and to be fair to them, they were they weren't New Zealanders, so yeah. they and they were then educated. Oh, they, they, <laughs> I, I actually stood there and I thought, should I tell them or should I just get them even more confused when they see another uh, twelve other players <laughs> who have all got the same surname? How small would New Zealand be when we've all got the same same surname? So um, I thought that was nice, uh, and I think I'll withdraw her surname. Okay. 
Um, we'll just we'll call it. No, no, no. We won't. We will just call her Wendy from Wellington. Yes, Wendy from Wellington. And um, uh, if you're an she, Australian, you'd be describing what Wellington was like. Yes, yeah. And she told. I thought my Aotearoa story was the best. And then she she comes up to um, uh, to us and she says, "Oh, you know what just happened?" She says, "I was sitting there watching the women's game, and I turned to the person on my left and I said." Do you know that that you look a lot like Prince Edward? <laughs> and and the guy says, "I am Prince Edward." <laughs> and, uh, and she's and and being a good Kiwi, Kiwi, she went, "Hi, I'm Wendy from Wellington." <laughs> Handshake and everything. Uh, meanwhile, I'm sure the security were buzzing around <laughs> trying to trying to do this. What's and, going on? <laughs> yeah, and for the next ten minutes, Wendy from Wellington um, uh, talked to Prince Edward. Oh, fantastic! About everything about bowls. Uh, Wendy from Wellington forgot to introduce her husband on the other side of her, so so he didn't get a mention at all. I think he may have snapped a photo, which may be somewhere on on, <laughs> on Facebook somewhere. But I thought that was beautiful. Only a Kiwi, uh, in you know, in England, um, faced with someone, you know, with a, with a, a with a prince would not know he was the prince. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, would great. then would then reply back. Most of us, once we got, you know, we would have been a little bit embarrassed. But okay, yeah. She's right in there. Oh, Hi, good. I'm Wendy from Wellington. <laughs> good on you, Wendy. Yeah, that's good. You. Those are good stories. Thank you, Mark, for yes, sharing that. Yes. Uh, I think that's a good note to finish the Com Games uh, review on. So uh, moving on, in 2023, which isn't that far away, there's a World Championships. Yeah, there is. So um, uh, normally there's a two-year gap, um, but obviously uh, not this occasion. So August, September next year. We're on the Gold Coast uh, at a World Champs. Um, so now our focus shifts to that. Uh, men's woman power uh, and um, collecting some world championship medals um, through that space uh, obviously the Australian conditions are, are more known to us uh, and hopefully with COVID now taking a back seat um, uh, we won't we'll be able to get our preparation right mm. uh, for the next 12 months um, so so now our thinking is you know uh, we have obviously done or we're doing a debrief at the moment of the com games uh, of our learnings um, uh, but very quickly we have to shift um, high performance wise to uh, to the 23 world champs mm, that'll be interesting I'm <coughs> looking forward to seeing that and obviously there'll be um, bowls Australia does a good job of all the things don't they so the 2023 world champs will be a, a good one to both watch and I suppose participate in. Um, yeah, they do. As well. They do. They they run a really good event. Um, but equally, I thought um, uh, Leamington on Spa and, and what they achieved there, um, I'll be careful. I, mean, I suppose I'm in New Zealand, I can say it, but I actually thought the Birmingham Com Games for bowls was better than, than the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, maybe we need to cut that later. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in. Leave it in. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, Twilight Bowl 3-5, Mark. What have we got? What do we know about, or what do you know about? Oh, I'm going uh, to save that. myself there and say we won three medals at Leamington on Spa and only two in the uh, that is at, why it was at, better. Uh, Gold yeah. Coast, so that's why it was better. Yeah, good yeah, logic. That'll, that'll I do. like it. That'll do. Um, what else we got? Um, uh, let's let's just move into the YouTube TV stuff. Yes. So, um, Three or f- no, let's. I'll paint a picture if I can, and it's, sometimes it's hard to do, do this with words over a podcast. But um, five, ten years ago, Bowles, five years ago, Bowles was paying to get our product produced and on TV, uh, and not small amounts. We were six figure stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, three years ago, three to four years ago, we started to produce. Um, so we started to produce our own product, but pretty much we were having to pay to get it on TV. Uh, a year ago, um, we were producing it uh, and um, uh, not having to pay, but we could get it on TV. Um, the world has changed so much, and now we're we're we've got all this product um, bowls coverage on YouTube TV, and I I haven't painted that picture very well, but um, I guess where I'm heading with this is that we're now in a world where. TV as as we used to know it, Sky t- Sky Sport and and um, TVNZ and Prime TV. Um, there are other platforms that mm-hmm. you can view your you know you can watch things on. Um, Netflixes and the likes um, are good examples. But equally, uh, in terms of sport, you can go into the likes of Bowls NZ, you know, a YouTube subscriber channel, and you can see Bowls. Um, and what am- what's what amazed us. Um, coming out of the Champ of Champs in July, 
uh, were with the sheer numbers. Yeah, the numbers of people watching our our um, winter series, admittedly, but our champ of champs um, competitions, um, and it was good good quality, you know, and, and that's not being unfair to people, but um, you know, it was good quality bowls and it was good quality um, coverage, but it wasn't, you know, rugby, you know, um, football, cricket type coverage. Mm. It was just good, but those numbers were were, were just amazing. So I think uh, I, I'm, one that stuck in, stuck in my head was that we had th- for the fours, Champa Champ fours, which were in Hastings, we had 30,000, almost 30,000 unique viewers watching you know bowls new zealand's champ of champ fours yeah over the three town. days over the three <laughs> days it is it's just phenomenal <coughs> phenomenal numbers that are that are watching um and I, and I think that's really exciting i think you know the split screen helped us a bit because we were getting additional coverage um, and what's missed in that thirty thousand type number two is the number of um clubs uh that were putting up the the coverage the yeah. youtube coverage on their yeah. tv to to 20 or 30 or 10 people that were sitting in the bar so um it's been quite a quite quite a, quite interesting to see that um we're now getting used to accessing our tv in different uh, in different platforms yeah that's what's cool for me i think is that even in the last two or three years the amount of people i suppose just as you upgrade your televisions but it's become easier and easier to literally sit down in the lounge and just go, oh, you know, something is on YouTube. I'll watch it on my television now. Whereas even two or three years ago, that was a step for people. Yes. I understand that that was a step yeah. for people. But yeah. I think it's becoming, and it's only going to get easier as we go forward as well because even the cheapest television you can buy will probably have YouTube oh, built have, into it. Yep, yep. It'll have some sort of Google search or whatever mm. it might be. Um, I would say now that I've been asked a few times, people go, oh, sometimes it's quite difficult to get to it. Mm. Um, uh, and this sounds a bit, Stupid us saying it, but I would say to you now, bypass Facebook, bypass the website, and just go straight to YouTube. Yeah. Type in Bowls NZ, Bowls NZ. Yeah. Uh, and then subscribe to our channel, uh, and not only will you see all the bowls coverage, you know, current and past, but you'll also be able to get alerts and things like that when there's upcoming coverages. Um, so um, uh, that's really cool. And what what that means now is that we Bowls Bowls the Bowls community, we own all of our, we produce it all. We own all our own content. We can distribute it as we want to as well. So there's no reason why, just because it's on YouTube, that we can't give it to a Sky or a Prime or a, um, a Stuff.co.nz or a Facebook or whoever. We can actually distribute it wherever we want to distribute it. You know, we had some interest out of, um, uh, I can't remember what the name of the television station is that supports the Pacific Islands. But, you know, can they put our YouTube bowls coverage mm. Uh, up on their Pacifica type TV TV channels. Is, is that what you see going forward, Mark? Is that um, Bowls New Zealand will continue to improve what our product looks like when we produce our national championships or whatever it might be? Chuck it on our YouTube channel first and foremost, free to wear television essentially. Um, but if there's interest from uh, a tr- more traditional station, they could also carry it. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely, I think I think it's beholden on us to make sure we 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 keep it accessible to our own community. But um, if we really want to grow our game, then we need to make it uh, available on other platforms as well, so non bowlers can also see it. Um, uh, you made a point there about improvement, though. We we'll continuously look to improve mm-hmm. and try things. Um, I can remember the first day of the split screen, and I got quite a few messages after the champion champs going, "Oh, this is horrible! Can't watch this." You know, and I know even on the first day the commentators were struggling as well. Yeah. But by the time we got to day three and then the next few weekends of competition, I think people went, oh, that's quite cool. You know, it was a nice little addition. Now, we won't split, we'll probably only split screen about two or three events a year, right? Mm Mm-hmm where we've just got a whole volume uh, of things. But it's a nice to try these things. Uh, And if they work, great. If they don't work, then we move on. Um, When you see the north and south, I think you'll see some really cool changes uh, in terms of our production. Uh, We've got some um, uh, very clear thinking now uh, and changes coming in the area of commentary. Um, So I won't, you know, we'll we'll hold hold on that conversation for now. But um, we need to continue to challenge ourselves and to improve upon these things and we're you know uh, and we're blessed them I and tomorrow does a fantastic job uh, and uh, very much tomorrow is open to that 
um, uh, changing and improving, improving uh, each event. So, um, you know, I sat down with Tamara yesterday, and we're talking about uh, October, November. Yeah. And I think she, you know, she she quite rightly said to me something like, "You do realise I'm going from Burnside to Nelson for three events potentially, uh, and then I'm down to Invercargill." Uh, and then I'm back up to Auckland, and then I'm back down to this, and going over to that. I think she had Morrinsville on this list as well. Yeah. Um, all in the space of she said, "There's six weekends in a row, and one of these events is midweek, um, <laughs> and going around the country." And and I um and I thought, well, I thought initially I was like, "Oh, geez, I didn't thought of that." And then I thought, "How cool is that?" Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> you know, we've got that level of coverage and that level of interest, yeah. uh, and they're not. It's not compelling viewing. It's not stuff that you're going to suddenly go. Oh, I'm going to have to sit down and watch the Morrinsville um, event or the uh, or the Nelson or the Burnside thing. But if you do find that you've got some time or you know some people in there those events or you want to watch it two days later, then you have that opportunity. Um, so it's really exciting, um, and I think now that we're through COVID, hopefully, um, yes. Uh, now that we're through COVID, then um, I think you'll see the volume of events absolutely will pick up uh, that we're covering on YouTube uh, and um, I'm hoping obviously that the quality will also pick up as well. Yeah, no, it's exciting times. Um, <coughs> before we uh, go on to the next person who's going to be Blake Signal, who's the general manager of Bowles Wellington, I'm looking forward to hearing what he's got to say. Have you got anything else that comes into mind that you'd like to share, Mark, or anything that's that's coming up uh, that we want our Bowles community to be cognizant of? Well, I was, I was. Um, you asked me to prepare a little list, and I, you know, whenever I think now in terms of what we're doing, um, two two things pop to the almost to the top of mind now, or three actually. Um, one is is the whole TV stuff broadcast. We can't escape the fact that as a national body, we have a responsibility to promoting and televising effectively our game. Yeah. So that's really important. Um, the other one is the twilight. Um, stuff that we talked about so we talked about in you know in, in England and the home countries and that they're you know potentially struggling with that social space um, we've now um, got uh, what were the numbers it was two years ago it was 4,500 people were playing Twilight Bowls two three years ago last year it was 10,300 playing Twilight Bowls and when you consider that there's only 25,000 full playing members the growth in this big space, chunk, big yeah. chunks. So, you know, I know I was talking to, I um, hope they don't mind, but again, once again, we'll do it. Um, <laughs> but I was talking to my club, who we won't name, but some people might know who they are, and they're looking to do a Twilight Bowls League in February, March of next year. If you live in the Riverhead, Coatesville, Tumu area. <laughs> I think you may have <laughs> just given away your club yeah, there, yeah, Mark. Yeah. yeah, but they're looking to do it. And they're, this is a one green club with about 30, 35 members, right? Mm. Uh, if they do it on a Thursday night, shall we say, they're going to get potentially another 50, 60, 70, 80 people who are going to be members of their club playing in an eight-week competition. Mm. More people playing on that one night than are playing in the weekend and the weekend competitions. And that's a game changer. And if, if the club does it well, and I know they will, you know, out of that 50, 60, 70 people that potentially play on that Thursday night, they're going to start to get the one, twos and threes yeah. who are going to drift. Yeah, you know, if you if we're really smart, we tap them on the shoulder and say, "You're a great player. You'd be fantastic in our in our side or in our club champs or whatever it might be." Um, so I think we've got some real opportunity there, yeah. and that's success too. I think I think it's easy to overlook as a club. Like it's great to have your social ones, but if you have a plan, say, to get more full time bowling members, to get two or three a year is success, isn't it? Two so, or three full playing, full playing. But but what we're seeing now, and this this was the ten thousand storyline I was saying before is that that's 10,000 members of mm -hmm. clubs they're not they're not full playing they're not going to be on your committees more than likely but they are members of your club they're going to be contributing to your bar and they're going to be using oh, your brilliant. greens I, yep. I just think think that's um, that's a huge part of our future it isn't solely our future we still want competitive Saturday Sunday type bowls midweek bowls but but that this whole social social thing phenomenon I think is really really important mm. to our 
survival but also our growth yep. uh, of the game so um, uh, if you want to know more about Twilight Bowls um, we still offer bribes to clubs uh, to, to get involved um, uh, so contact Sally at bowlsnewzealand.co.nz uh, or me or send a um, message through the info line yeah, as well yeah just anything in our direction and we'll put you on to the we will we will to the right person so, so that's really important I'll, 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 I will cover the other couple so um, Bowls Hub uh, I think I think Bowls Hub's going to be the next big one. I, you know, Twilight Bowls three five or Twilight or Bowls three five. Um, the the TV what we're doing in the TV space. I think Bowls Hub has the potential to be a really big a game changer for our sport. Um, uh, not only in terms of uh, competition management and uh, and uh, entering results and points tables etc. Ladders and that, but actually um, each individual person will have a whole database of their individual results. And when you start to collate that data, when you start to say, right, Alex Reid played, you know, 87 games in the summer of 23, and he uh, he won 14 and lost um, 64. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, but more, more interesting that whenever he skipped, he lost. <laughs> but when he played lead, he actually won, they won their games. You know, and I think that's really valuable data if Alex Reid wants to improve his, his game of bowls. Um, and, and what leads from this conversation too, and it won't happen for two or three years, but once we start to have all this data about Alex Reid as a bowler, we can start to say, well, actually Alex Reid is, is probably more of a D-grade bowler than he is an A-grade bowler based on results. Yeah. This is just a fictional situation, this isn't is. it? Just yeah. think about just Alex Reid as John a Smith. Yeah, that's or John Doe. That's um, uh, so let's, yeah, so, so, which is quite cool. So then if you start to think further about that sort of stuff, you start to go, well, actually, if Alex Reid is a D-grade bowler based on all his results, wouldn't it be great to run a tournament for the Alex Reeds of this world, for the D-grade bowlers? So they don't have to play all the A-grades. Mm. Um, and I think it's going to change... Uh, and and this might be a bit controversial, but it might. I think it's going to change the way we think about juniors, uh, and that we may just start to look at players in terms of where how they're graded, where they're sitting, where yeah. they're sitting. Yeah. So um, you start out at the E grade, shall we say, and if you're good, you work your way up D, C, B, uh, and into A. But you may well always stay at the E grade, um, and you know maybe you play in those leagues. Yeah. Maybe maybe we create disciplines where you've got to have a combination of you know one A and two Ds and whatever yeah. it might be. No, it sounds exciting. I think it can be um, yeah. positive stuff. Yep. yep. So I think that one's another big one for us. And the other one I'd probably uh, point to is that we're going to be doing a lot of work around um, uh, inclusion in our sport. Um, so um, hopefully you've seen some of the energy that we're putting in around the para community uh, and supporting the para community. But equally, there's a, there's a lot more work we can do around... Um, I guess just just working down this path of New Zealand being and our and our bowls community being open to everybody, so men can play women, you know. Probably thirty years ago that would have been a shock or might have been a bit of a shock. <laughs> Nowadays it's commonplace, which I think is fantastic. Um, how do we welcome migrants and uh, and different nationalities, uh, ethnicities into our sport, and how do we support that? Uh, I think that's a really co cool conversation. Um, obviously we've got the the age thing. Uh, as well and, and then we've got people with um, disabilities mm. how do we support that and, and I think that's really exciting for our sport because we're one of the few sports that can legitimately say it doesn't matter who you are male, men, woman, young or old um, you know Chinese or, or, or um, English um, uh, dis, you know abled or disabled you can actually play bowls equally um, you know, you're on a level playing field. Yeah, for sure. Yep. You may all have to start out life as Alex Smith's, uh, Alex Reed's, but, <laughs> but that's all right. You can improve. And hopefully it is a level playing field as well. If you've got a good, good greenkeeper, that'll be, um, yeah. that'll be level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you've got artificial greens. Yeah, that but that's, works. that's a conversation that for another day. Too. Um, oh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, and we'll have you back shortly as the co-host for the uh, next segment. But thank you for going through that. There's a bit that we covered, and I'm sure... There'll be something there that someone was interested in, which is always a always a positive. It's my, it was my pleasure to be a guest on on this show. Yes, yeah, and a co-host very yeah. very shortly. So on that note, uh, coming up next, we're going to talk to Blake Signal here on the Bowls Hour.
Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. And now, Mark, on the line, as I said before, we have Blake Signal, who is the uh, new GM of Bowls Wellington. Thank you for coming on to the show, Blake. How are you feeling? Yeah, mate. Good, thanks very much uh, for having me on the show. It's brilliant to be able to come and talk to you guys. No, you, you did us a favour, so we're, <laughs> we're quite pleased. I thought before we get into your role at um, Bowls Wellington, and for the very few people who don't know um, you in the Bowls community, I thought we'd just start right at the beginning. And could you just tell us, you know, what was your first experience with um, with Bowls? What was the first time you came across it? Um, well, I was pretty much uh, born into the sport, to be honest with you. Uh, my father uh, has played Bowls for coming up 50 years, I think, and, and next year I think would be his 50th year of playing Bowls. So. Yeah, literally born into the uh, Stokes Valley Bowling Club. Um, grew up at the club there, and um, yeah, uh, that's my first sort of experience of it. You know, I've handed around the bowling club members, and and you know, that was that was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you um, always keen to give it a go, or did you sort of come along begrudgingly and and watch and think this isn't a game I'm going to play? Um, I was always going to play. Um, it was just a matter of uh, when, you know. I um, I started playing uh, our business house league when I was eight years old um, and wanted to join up straight away then at, at that age. But uh, back in those days, you had to be 16 to, before you could uh, join a bowling club. So I had to wait around until uh, 16 years of age before I could join up properly. That must have been a little bit, a little bit frustrating, was it, to to sit on the sidelines? Yeah, for sure. Look, um, yeah, like I remember going to different bowling clubs around Wellington where I wasn't even allowed in the clubhouse back in those days. So, um, yeah, it's a totally different scene now where we're opening opening doors with um, and opening arms to, to anyone that wants to come in and, and try the sport. So, um, but yeah, back in those days, it was a bit of a waiting game and a bit frustrating, but... Um, those those times at those bowling clubs, I used to sneak out and jump on the green, and and throw bowls down while while mum and dad were inside the club. So it wasn't all bad. <laughs> did you did you have any did your siblings play? Did you have any siblings? Uh, I've got two. I've got two sisters. Yes. Uh, they they've dabbled in the sport, but um, ultimately haven't really taken on. Uh, my sister in her later years is. Um, very big in the administration of the sport around Wellington and and now up in the Manawatu area, but um, generally they haven't played it a, a, a lot really. Yep, I remember Vanessa very well uh, in terms of her contribution. I think she may have got a um, a big award from us one year, and fact she um, did she get a QSM about three years ago as well for contribution to bowls and the bowls community. So um, uh, well done there. Hey, um, uh, did you have any heroes? Did you have any bowlers that you kind of Kind of looked up to and said, "I want to play like play like um, them." Oh, for sure, yeah. Look, um, in my early years, uh, Eddie Irving was uh, he was winning everything in, in Wellington, and um, I was very lucky to be able to play my early years and bowls with Eddie Irving. Um, I think he he went on to play at Depoki, and I believe now he's back down in the Capiti Coast area. But um, yeah, look, Eddie Irving was a bit of a legend. Uh, growing up in the sport in Wellington. Um, but also, you know, I, I always looked up to my old man too. Um, so, you know, he had a big influence on my game early on as well. Did you get a chance? Have you played with him much over the years? Have you won some titles with him and things like that? or uh, With, with, with my your, dad? Yeah, with your dad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look, um, we won the Wellington uh, champion of champion triples a few years back, uh, that was Dad's first ever title for, for Wellington. He, he'd won a, a, about 20, 30 club titles, but yeah, he was, um, that was his first Wellington title and yeah, he played absolutely brilliant in the final too. Um, so it was fantastic to, uh, to play with him and that's probably one of my um, most precious wins. Oh, that's nice. I'd love to hear that. Hey, Alex, um, normally with our guests, he tries to um, link all these conversations back to indoor bowls for some reason. <laughs> tell me, tell me, Blake, you never played indoor bowls, did you? You're not one of those people. Uh, 
I, I'm afraid I am a very big indoor bowler. Oh. So. <laughs> uh, when I we... started playing indoor bowls when I was about five years old, so um, it's well and truly in the blood. All right, well, let's do another promotion for indoor bowls on the, on the Bowls New Zealand podcast. <laughs> yep, go away you go, it, you go, go Alex. It, Blake. <laughs> um, so yeah. Just, yeah, just quickly before we get into the outdoor <laughs> career, I just yeah, wondered if you could just talk us through, you know, a couple of the um, a couple of the highlights of, of your of your indoor indoor one. Yeah, look, um, like I say, I started playing indoor when I was about five years old. I used to go to club night and 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 leave at uh, the cup of tea time at about nine o'clock, and Mum would take me home to go to bed. Um, but yeah, look, I. I Loved my indoor bowls, and it probably put me in good stead moving forward into the outdoor game. But I was lucky enough to have a, a brief, uh, sweet but short career as a North Island representative. Um, I won a Welch Trophy, and um, yeah, played played quite a lot of events around the country and national events. And yeah, so it was a it was a short and sweet at the top sort of level but I still love playing it and actually played just last weekend and uh, a couple of events in Upper Heart. Oh, brilliant. That's great news. <laughs> That's very good. So from the indoor to the um, into the outdoor career uh, you've had a, a illustrious career that's still um, chugging on pretty good in the outdoor one. What are some highlights that stick out to you uh, on the outdoor side? Oh look um Obviously, the the biggest highlight was uh, the World Championship win in 2016. Um, yeah, that was just uh, absolutely amazing to be a part of. Uh, we were a team that went through unbeaten um, and and convincingly unbeaten too. Like we we won most games by by lots of lots of shots, and um, yeah, we just dominated sort of that that event that year. So that's one that will always. Uh, go to the top of the list, but there's um, and yeah, a number of different events that have been great um, and obviously winning winning national events and um, being able to go travel the world, you know, I've been to Commonwealth Games and uh, been to Hong Kong a few times, so it's, it's just opened up so many opportunities for me, it's been fantastic. Yeah, for sure. That's what I was going to ask. So, like, uh, when you started taking bowls seriously, did you ever, you know, did you have a goal of, like, playing for New Zealand or winning national titles or world titles? Was that something that was on your radar like, when you thought, oh, I'll give this game a, a proper go? Was it something you thought about? Yeah, look, for sure. Um, I remember going to the camps, and I think I've heard other podcasts where, uh, some of the athletes have mentioned the bag goal, the BHAG goals. Um, I had one of them as well. Um, wrote down that I wanted to play at the Commonwealth Games um, in Glasgow and was very lucky to be able to achieve that goal. Um, played with Richard Gervin in the pairs, um, Ali Richard and Tony Grantham in the fours. And, you know, we we did quite well in the pairs. We got through to the quarterfinals and... Uh, Unfortunately, came against a couple of players called uh, Alex Marshall and Paul Foster, who <laughs> um, okay. on the home track were just far too good. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, it's, it was always um, always there, and and that was a great thing uh, with the development program that we had growing growing up in the sport here. For me, uh, that we had all those camps where we set those goals and and were able to achieve them and, and find the right pathways to get to them. Okay, okay, that was my contribution to it. I just said you cool. Said cool. That's, that's that, all good. That, that's, that's, hey, um, <laughs> then I will, Blake. I will ask a question just just because we've um, uh, Alex has been quizzing me on the Com Games, but the challenges of Glasgow versus playing at home are the, is it is it is it that much different, or is it really just about your I don't know your your mental approach to it? It it is a lot different. Um, it's a it's a totally different game that you play. Um, and I I watched the Birmingham games uh, quite extensively, and you could see on that rank six where they couldn't play that ditch end. And and I'm have I've got my my father just saying, why aren't they just playing down there? It's wide open, and it's like you just can't play it. <laughs> it's just it's just too hard. Like, you just can't. And and in New Zealand, you can't sort of comprehend that. You know, you've got a tricky hand that's got a little straightener, but you can sort of work your way around it, whereas on those greens over there, it's just it's a totally different game. So you have to change your mindset going into those games about how you play. And, um, and you know, people say there was a lot of luck in this shot or that shot over there, but, you know, you sort of play for that luck because 
you've you sort of forced down one sort of shoot basically over there. I, I always remember drawing to an off centre kitty in one of the games in Glasgow, and you'd have to chuck it five times harder than what you would be if you were down your normal shoot um, playing to the centre line because uh, the green just hadn't been trampled on and, and worn in, so it was just a totally different um, line and weight that you had to play. So, yeah, it's very, very difficult on those greens over there. But it is also, I, a lot of people I've heard comment that it mustn't be enjoyable, but it is still quite enjoyable because it's a new challenge that you've got. And if you're like myself, I love a challenge, and that's why I play the game of bowls because it is challenging every single game. Yep, yep. I do recall you just. I'm sitting here at the moment. I'm thinking about your the greens over there, and I recall a young fella, Alex Reed, this year in June. He was over at the Trans Tasman. I eventually got past the head mark. Yeah. No. Yes. Anyway, he decided he'd take on Graham Scallon in a game of singles, and after two ends, he was eight 0 down. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, just thought I'd give him a handicap to start off with. Yeah. And, nice. Uh, nice. It was too big a handicap to be fair. I got past the head on about end nine or ten, I think. Yeah. It was. It's a challenge. It's just different. About though. dislocated my shoulder. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's about it's about making sure you've got that delivery right and pushing all your weight forward into the delivery. And um, yeah, it, it it takes a while to get the hang of, but once you've got the hang of it, um, it doesn't. It, it should feel a lot more natural. And um, you know, I think looking at the the players that were playing over there for New Zealand, they they looked like they had their deliveries going very well. And you know, just a b- little bit of luck either either side for them. It could have been a totally different story for the men. And obviously the, the girls were just absolutely fantastic. I, I was really impressed with how they performed. Yeah, it did look they did look good. You can see, um, I think if the delivery looks effortless, when you know, you know, like we know that you have to give it a, a big push, they've done something right. Like Mike Galloway for me, um, it was staggering when I went and watched the Trans-Tasman. His delivery just looked the same as it was on the, on the domestic surface. And it's like, well, obviously you've got it. You figured you've, it out. You've figured it yeah. out uh, properly. Very good. That's hey, some... you asked me about little stories before. Sorry, Blake. I'm not not taking over your your, your conversation, <laughs> right. but I. But did, did it back here back home, Alex and and Blake? Did we um we were in the men's fours quarterfinal. We were down six with two ends to play, uh, and we got an eight. Yes. In the quarterfinal of the Commonwealth Games, we got an eight on the second to last end, uh, and unfortunately, we we then dropped a three or four on the last end, but. Do you, do you, I've never heard of an eight, and that's at that level. I mean, I've seen. Trust me, I've played junior bowls and I've I've dropped two eights actually so far. Um, but but I don't. At international, do you hear about that sort of stuff in fours eights? Does that happen? Um, internationally, not very often. <laughs> um, and I just I, I remember seeing that result because it wasn't played on TV and. I just remember thinking the poor guys there, the, the amount of emotion that they would have gone through over two ends would have just a roller coaster, you know, mm. like the, the the devastation that they're probably going to lose the quarter final to, wow, we're actually going to win this to, then it's all of a sudden gone yeah. again. It was, um, it would have just been a roller coaster. Mm. But yeah, look, I, I don't think I've recalled too many eights in international bowls. Um, no, I think it's I, real. I definitely. Yeah, but, I've, I've done it in a national event uh, when we won the national fours for my first time. Uh, we dropped an eight in the first game of qualifying, but yeah, like yeah, not very often. No, no. I thought it, I thought it was outstanding. It would have been great little two or three ends to have on TV that because I, whilst I was riding the New Zealand wave, I watched the Welsh guys. And they were ahead by six. So obviously, when they dropped their eight, you just think the world must have just suck them up after that one <laughs> suddenly they're down two with one end to play in a game they they should have you know they clearly should have won based on their scoreline and then they get to the last the their absolute last bowl when he trails the jack uh back to a about two back, meters back wasn't it yeah back to, to a waiting two or three clear. so he ends up picking up a three or four out of it but the high and the low would have been yeah. just incredible not only for our guys but those welsh well, boys i rode a wave of emotions oh. reading through end by end so i can't, yeah. I can't <laughs> imagine what it was like to be a part of it anyway we've been distracted mate Sorry. we should get back to the topic <laughs> um so we'll, we'll gloss over your time in australia because we don't have time for it but suffice to say welcome you, home you went to australia and you're back now which is great <laughs> and you've got a <laughs> you've got a new role as the gm of bowls wellington i was wondering could you talk us about you know how that whole thing came about like uh was it something you were planning to to do to come back home um look no it sort of um 
really off the cuff, to be honest. I came back for a little holiday uh, a few months a few months ago, and when I was over here, the Bowles Wellington job was up for grabs, and me and Angela, um, Angela's my wife, uh, and the kids, we had such a great time when we were back over here, being around family, and um, we went back home to Australia. Well, went back to Australia. I can't call that home. Um, <laughs> but we went back to Australia, and uh, me and Angela had a talk and decided that I'd, I'd apply for the position. Um, it being my sort of dream job, and um, and yeah, from there, I was offered the position and, and took it up, and we moved back. So. Yeah, it was sort of, it wasn't really planned. It was just that we had that little um, vacation over here after three years of being away and, and realised that we wanted to sort of be back around that family environment and it just sort of popped up at the right time, right place. And, um, yeah, like I say, it's a, a dream job for me, um, helping run the sport I love and the, and the town that I absolutely love. So, yeah. All right, I've got two questions for you, Blake. Um, yep. uh, one is: Are you back in Stokes Valley, or have you, or have you branched out somewhere else in the valley, Hutt Valley? Are you living? Uh, we're living in Upper Hutt at the moment, Upper but Hutt. I will be uh, a staunch Stokes Valley bowler still. You um, will. That's that's my home club. That's where I'm growing till, up. So yeah, till the day <laughs> you die. Brilliant. That's the one. Uh, good, good. And um, in terms of the role, what 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 are you what are you looking to achieve? What are you thinking in the first the, in terms of the first six to twelve months? What's the uh, you know what are your hopes? What do you how do you, how do you want to approach this? Yeah, look, um, <clears throat> I really want to work with the clubs um, quite a bit. Um, I feel that if we have strong, healthy clubs in the Wellington area, then that's going to help produce a strong, healthy Bowls Wellington. Um, you know, you've got to get that grassroots level, that foundation right within uh, within a sporting organisation to really be able to excel with further plans um, at the top end. So I think if we can really put a lot of emphasis on um, making sure we have a strong, healthy uh uh, foundation, then we can do some great things, and we're already doing some amazing things here in um, in Bowls Wellington. And you guys had Brady um, Amar on uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, who's our engagement and inclusivity officer, and he's doing some amazing things with uh, the with schools and and different organisations at the moment. Um, so Nigel, who I've taken over from, set up some fantastic systems which has made my transition into the role um, a lot easier and um, has given me a nice little pathway of, of where he was looking towards and um, and then, yeah, um, really looking forward to seeing us uh, continually grow. And are you, are you going to play a bit of bowls over the summer? What's your, what's your thinking there uh, in terms of the role in bowls? Yeah, look, I'm going to sort of mix it up a bit. I'm going to play a little bit of bowls, but also try and get around um, and watch a bit of bowls too, and, and watch um, and, and get out to the clubs and and see. And I, like I say, um, I really want to work with those clubs. So by being out there and, and engaging with them, whether it be playing or, or visiting, um, it's going to be a, a great um, resource for me to be able to help them um, and find out what they need. So. Definitely going to be playing uh, a little bit of bowls, but it won't be taking up all of my time. Um, yeah, good, good. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you don't want to you don't want to lose that talent. Uh, you could always go back to indoor bowls, I suppose. If you, if <laughs> we'll take really it. Need, <laughs> if you really, we need, need as much help as we can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, fair enough. No, um, yeah, well, um, yeah, I'm really excited because uh, I've missed playing on uh, on the greens around New Zealand. You know, uh, in New South Wales, the greens are generally in that sort of 13 to 14 seconds and and it's still a bit of a push up all the time and so it's going to be nice playing on some good greens around the Wellington area and and hopefully around the country and and seeing a bowl finish nice and nicely into the head so it's going to be good I'm looking forward to that yeah that's always better than going up oh. <laughs> <So, laughs> I've let yeah. it go and it's just stopped oh um, thank you very much for uh, giving us some of your time uh, Blake and talking a bit about your uh, bowls career and well I suppose I could just say bowls career because you know that's what your career is now which is great um <laughs> It's been uh, much appreciated, and I'd like to wish you, I'm sure on behalf of Mark as well, all the best uh, in your Bowles Wellington role going forward. And, yeah, just uh, thanks for your time, and have a good rest of your whatever your day is. Thank you very much. Cheers, Blake. See ya.
Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Bowls Hour, the show for all things bowls. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, remember to share it around. We can be found on Facebook every week from 7pm, as well as Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, The Bowls New Zealand website, or wherever you get your podcasts. Tune in next week for more talk about everything bowls. Until then, roll on.